Hello there and welcome back to the studio today. So what we have is a brand new canvas. We have a large canvas so that means that we're going to start another large painting project. So we're going to be using the classical approach and I've been trying to figure out what to call this. Uh, I wanted to call it the golden technique or like the golden classical approach or something like that but I think copyright might be a problem. <laughs> so I'll, I'm going to call it for now, I'm going to call it Yupari's classical technique so your part is classical technique and that's the technique that I'm going to use for this painting and it's a technique that I'm going to be formally writing up and having a series of steps and then having some educational content to provide for you. And so on the palette here we have just titanium white and burnt umber. These two are Winsor and Newton colors, Winsor Newton oil paints. Right here we have our medium, the gel-like medium. It's a fast drying medium, Neo McGilp. And right down there we have our odorless mineral spirits, but it's not really odorless mineral spirits. Let me show you what it is. And it's this tube right here. And no, no one's paying me to tell you this. I still need to run to the store and get regular odorless mineral spirits. Um, but anyway, this is a uh, citrus essence brush cleaner and it behaves just like regular odorless mineral spirits so i'm just going to add a little bit onto my brush here this is going to be my drawing brush and so i'm just going to call it mineral spirits from now on because it basically acts just like odorless mineral spirits so with the mineral spirits i'm just going to um, just add a little bit of mineral spirits to the burnt umber so mostly burnt umber, just regular paint with the mineral spirits. I'm going to add a tiny bit. Now this is not recommended, but I'm going to add a tiny bit of the medium. This is the fast drying medium Neo McGill because as you probably know, I want this to be dry very soon. So I'm not going to want that much mineral spirits, um, just, I don't know, maybe like 2% mineral spirits and so we're going to be working on a 24 by 30 inch cotton canvas this is your regular everyday normal cotton canvas and right here we have an image of our model morgan and i'm going to keep a picture of her to the top left corner of your screen throughout the uh, throughout all of the painting footage minus maybe some cinematic shots that we'll get now and then but you'll have that photo reference to uh, you know, have some reference as to what I'm um, painting, for lack of better words. So let's just get to the painting, all right? And now, since this is a larger canvas, um, I am going to have to have that camera much further away and at a pretty good angle away from, uh, you know, away from me. So just know that there might be some, or there will be some kind of distortion just because the camera is on, off to the side, just so, you know, I can paint and um, the photo reference will remain there. So like I was saying in the beginning of this video, we're gonna be using what I'm gonna now call uh, Yupari's classical technique. And I'm just throwing my name in there just because like it'll make it more unique. <laughs> I mean, how many, you know, Yupari's or whatever, whatever. <laughs> um, so that's what I'm gonna call it. So the first step is going to be the underpainting. I'm not entirely sure if I'll be able to finish the underpainting that quickly though. So the underpainting stage, really the most important thing, um, like I said, like I've been saying before, um, is the composition. So composition is going to be really, really important here. So, uh, you know, knowing where to place the model is going to be very important. So if I want to say that the top of the head is going to be about there and the bottom hand is going to be there, uh, and throw in a little bit of an angle here. So there's gonna be the backside of the other hand. Now I, I do think that there's gonna be a little bit of measuring, uh, a challenge with the measuring, because I don't want the hand, this hand here, I don't want it to get uh, too far. I don't want it to get too close to that corner. So I'm gonna to have to be very careful with how I place the hand. So in the beginning, the composition is going to be, you know, basically this. Like we want to have the general shape, the overall shape, okay? So I'm working on white just because I was too lazy to tone the canvas, but it would probably have been better to tone it, but Oh well, I think we'll be fine. So this is our basic geometry and this is composition for you. Composition is how to 
you know, how to orchestrate abstract shapes on your canvas. And you can see me moving back and forth, so I'm going to be standing back quite a lot. Um, so the idea here, you know, we're putting this little dark shape here that you see in the photo reference. So it's going to be about there. The model is going to be a little bit closer to the left. The hand is going to be over here. So we're already, um, you know, we're already approaching the composition that we want. Now I think that the head may need to move a little bit, give or take. So the important thing is this right here. I really don't want to uh, have the hand go off the screen. I really don't think that um, it'll be necessary for me to show every aspect of how I do this block in for the underpainting stage. It is going to be quite tedious. So I'm going to show you uh, how I block in basic shape and then I'm going to, I don't know, continue working for some time and then show you the results. But don't worry, I'll be explaining everything to you. So now we're going to move from the compositional stage. So this is very basic composition, very basic placement. Now we're going to move into the block-in stage, okay? So the block-in stage is going to ensure that we establish our proportions. And proportion is just a relation between shapes. That's all it means. So that is, let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. So top of the head, so suppose top of the head is here and bottom of the head is there. Those are two points that can be related, okay? So top of the head, bottom of the chin. Move that shape down to about here, okay? This is how we're going to work with our proportions. Remember, it's a relation between shapes. At this point, it's a relation between distances. So it's a little bit higher up, but yeah, you know what I mean. So here to here. Now, the model's chest line is going to be a little bit lower. And that is just because of the perspective. We're looking, we're looking up at the model. So um, since we're looking up at the model, it is going to change the perspective a little bit. I won't get too analytical into that right now. Another topic for another video, another day. So now the next thing to do is to look at, um, you know, Let's look at this measurement again. So top of the head, bottom of the chin goes down to uh, this point and then the chest line goes down here. The next thing to do is going to be to drop another measurement. So down here, so I'm actually going to have to close one eye and look at the, the reference because I actually forgot this measurement. takes me to about the hand, <laughs> so we might be in some trouble. Like I said, I'm going to be uh, not going to be showing every thing that I do here just because it'll, you know, it'll take forever, it'll take hours. So I'm in a lot of trouble now because that means that the hand, rather than it being there, the hand is going to have to move up. So either I'm going to have to move the hand up or I'm going to have to move the head and all of that down. And I don't know, I'm going to measure this again. And I'm, a, I'm very cautious of the photographic distortion. So I did go to um, the, the group. So th this pose, so a little bit of context into this pose. This is um, a pose taking place currently at the, uh, the Hood College portrait, or uh, open portrait session. So I will be going there tomorrow. So, so today is Thursday for me. I'm pretty sure this is probably going to be uploaded um, probably Saturday. I don't know whenever I'm going to upload this, but let's see. Okay, so the hand uh, is going to be moved up a little bit. So I need to now consider whether I'm going to drop the head down or if I'm going to um, if I'm going to if I'm going to drop the head down or raise the hand. Uh, to be honest, to be honest, I never do this, but I think I'm actually going to let this point be, okay? And I might end up having to drop the head a little bit. So we're going to do all this over. So point here to point here, point here to point here, okay? Equidistant here. So this is going to drop down yet again. 
I might need to drop it even more. Let's put in a third mark. Okay. So the hand will go about here. So I, I know it might be too low, but I don't know. Let's play around with the idea, okay? So if the model's head is going to fit here, and I'm just going to use a simple oval. So if the model's head is going to fit there, I know it's kind of messy right now, but oil paint allows you to be kind of messy. So let's move this down again. The chest line will go to about here. Okay, just simple straight lines and angles. It's much easier to construct with straight lines and angles than a bunch of curves, okay? Even though I used the curve there, but that was just a gesture of the head. Okay, so now let's go ahead and check out this measurement again. So top of the head, chin, chest line is just a little lower. We got that. Move that down again. The hand will start at about here, okay? So we did end up moving the hand a little bit, and I'm just using an oval right now just to um, simplify the geometry, okay? Because I do know where the top and the bottom of that shape is going to fit. So let's do this again. Chest line is a little bit lower. We got that. Hand is there. Okay, so now we have established, um, you know, the major proportion from the head to the chest to the hand, and now the other hand is going to go at some kind of angle. You know, it's not that far off though. The other hand is going to be about here. Now the next thing is going to be plumb lines. So with the block in, you're going to want to use simple straight lines and angles, and you want to constantly, constantly relate. Uh, verticals and horizontals. So right now here we have a point that we're going to use. Uh, so right here is the corner of the, uh, the neck. If you drop that line all the way down it reaches the corner of the wrist. So this right here. So that gives us the corner of the wrist. And so that's how we relate shapes to one another. Uh, now let's use a horizontal. Okay, so the horizontal, so from this point here, so from the, the neck all the way down gives us the corner of the wrist. Now horizontal will give us the leg. See that? Horizontally we're going to get the leg. Now another important thing to look at is the angles between uh, points. So from here to here, I need to uh, now envision the angle from the top of the head down to the hand. I think we're, we're okay with that. This point um, is going to have to drop a little bit. So everything is kind of, um, you know, loose and workable. That's the important thing. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start to zero in on the shapes. So that's going to be the back of the hair. I'm just looking at the simple geometry. So the simple envelope. And it's okay if it looks kind of, you know, cartoony and, you know, just, just rough in the beginning. At this point, we're just gathering information. And before too long, I actually will block in uh, light and dark because oil paint, it, again, it allows us to work in that kind of way. It's a very forgiving medium. So let's go ahead and do that. So remember, the top of the head is to about there. So if this is our measurement for the head from here to here. Drop that again. Let's make sure not to lose our proportions. And again, it's it's a they're rough estimates, okay? Chest line goes down there, hand goes about here. They're rough estimates, okay? We'll be able to continue to add more specificity to the shapes as we go. Chin is there. Here's that line that I was relating to this point. And um, so with a little bit of the mineral spirits, I'm just going to try to subtract a little bit here. And don't worry, that will kind of dissipate into the air or evaporate. So it'll be fine. All right, so now let's go ahead and look at the top of the head, reestablish that point. 
like I said, this is going to be a, a very tedious thing, but it's important to know what you're looking for. And it will help you organize your steps. Like I said, we're going to be following something that I want to, I'm going to want to call, uh, you know, Yupari's classical technique. So the f this is the first step. The first stage is the underpainting. So I'm going to subdivide each stage into, um, you know, like smaller points, okay? So even though underpainting stage is, you know, one stage, there will be, uh, you know, things like composition, blocking, proportion, all of those things will play a role just so that it's, it's easier to follow because what I want is for you, I want to provide you with, you know, um, learning tools that will help you teach yourself. So you will have the, um, the information very, very clearly laid out for you and then all you have to do is just put it into, put it into practice. And before too long, I'm going to actually put in this shape here for the, um, for the shirt. Then dropping a vertical again, that's going to give us the corner of the hand. Just double checking that. And then we're going to relate, see this point here? Drop an angle there. So we're going to relate it to the corner of the arm. Now another proportion to look at is where the elbow is going to fit. And um, there's a lot of foreshortening with the forearm, so I think that the elbow um, might fit around here, give or take, but we'll, we'll figure that out as we go. And um, this little corner here is for that uh, the drapery that the model's wearing because our model's seated pretty still. So if that's the center line of our model, she's seated pretty still. So now I'll tell you what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to work on uh, the block in. And I'm going to continue to observe each one of these shapes in exactly the same way, uh, you know, using vertical, verticals and horizontals because that's the language uh, that we're going to use. Those are going to be the tools that we're going to use uh, to facilitate the block in. So yeah, I'm just going to continue to do this. All right, so after quite a long time, uh, we now have the shapes mapped out. And in the same kind of way that I was talking about before, remember it's kind of a repetitive thing doing the, the block in, especially with this large composition. So what I did was I drew it about, I don't know how many times, like maybe 15 times or so, and then um, I would continue to wipe it out. Like I said, repetitive, see how I kind of covered all of this. So I would continue to wipe it out until you can see some of the lines underneath until uh, finally then I got a smaller brush and just with simple straight lines and angles mapped out exactly where I want everything to fit. Like before, the uh, just proportion is in relation between shapes, okay? So this point to this point, again, down here, the chest is a little bit lower. I actually have to move that up again, but anyway, <laughs> the, the chest comes a little bit down to here. Um, these proportions are, are, I think they're pretty solid, minus a few little things here and there. The hands, again, just simple straight lines. See the rectangle over here? The corner of the hand is ending up here. We got that angle that we wanted. Then the leg crops off right over here, so no problem there. And then the, uh, the little dark fabric goes down there. And again, the head is placed a little bit lower down. So what I'm going to do now is with a smaller brush, I'm going to continue to block in uh, the, the face. And I don't know how much information I want to put into, into it, but I think I do want to have an idea of where the features and such are going to fit. So let's get into this. Now what we already have is the center line giving us the turn that the model's head is making. We can also tell that we're looking up at the model just because of this point, uh, this area right here. We can see a little bit of the bottom plane of the chin. And um, here we have the axes for the eyes, the axis for the eyebrows, a little mark for the nose and the mouth. And these are just my estimations, just a guess really. Um, so now, very similarly uh, to how I was working out the larger proportions uh, for the, the big picture, now we're going to subdivide into smaller shapes. 
just using simple straight lines and angles. There is the uh, the side plane, or sorry, the uh, the corner of the concavity of the eye socket on one side and on the other side. So let's follow through and make these angles much more specific. Now the important thing is not to lose um, this large shape that we worked or that I worked very, very hard on with trying to get this shape, so I don't want to lose it. So um, now, okay, so the angle right here and just simple straight lines and angles, all right. So this is still the block in stage for the underpainting. And for the eyes, I don't want to lose the angle between the eyes. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw in the concavity of the eye socket in this side. Now this goes down to about here. I'm just mapping out the eye socket. And now let's look at the cheekbone, zygomatic bone. This goes all down here and into here. Now for the eyes themselves, I'm not going to put too much information. So um, one thing that I have noticed with the um, citrus essence brush cleaner, the, uh, the thing that I'm calling odorless mineral spirits is not actually very odorless. Uh, it has a very nice smell if you're into citrus smell. Um, it does tend to, I think, evaporate a little faster than regular odorless mineral spirits, which is something that I'm trying to use to my advantage. So you can tell this is already starting to settle in which is uh, quite nice actually. The eye, let's see here, iris goes about here. The other iris about here. Want to make sure that we don't lose that angle. Now for each one of the features we don't want that much information because uh, let's face it, in the beginning we're most likely going to be wrong and that's okay. This is about um, you know gathering information. Relating this point to here. And like I usually say, um, if, you're, uh, if you're a complete beginner with uh, painting or portrait painting, I would highly recommend doing the same thing I'm doing here, but with charcoal. With Neutrum charcoal, or Fusain, uh, Vine charcoal, or whatever. Just charcoal. Now moving down here. Now a line is a pathway between two points, so from here to here. Now I want to make sure that the angle is correct. Now I know that the eyes look a little bit wonky and stuff like that. I'm not too terribly worried about you know, how many shapes I have in the eyes. Rather I'm focused on the placement of these larger structures here, 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 and here. So get the angles here. So the angle looks about good for the mouth. Bottom plane for the chin. Okay, so now the next thing for me to do, uh, I need to make the decision whether I want to uh, put in the titanium white mixture and further refine these shapes. And I think I'll go in that route. So these are the basic proportions. This is the basic block in. Uh, the light and shadow is going to be a little bit tricky. Uh, so usually after the basic block in, you know, even though the block in is not that perfect, see, I don't even have the outside shape uh, completely mapped out yet, but I think we'll be okay. Um, light and shadow is going to be kind of tricky just because the lighting scenario is a little bit different. The light's actually coming from this angle, so pretty much all of this would be in shadow, but there's still some ambient light in the room, so that's why I'm going, uh, you know, when you're not too sure about the light and shadow patterns, it's better to just use a more linear approach. That's what I'm doing here. Let's see here. So um, what I've been using is just paper towel. Sorry, I was bumped into the camera. So what I've been using is just paper towel to erase. That's how I got all of this stuff covered. You can see the paper towel marks here. So I'm just using paper towel to erase right now. Alright, so I think I'm ready to fill in some shapes and of value in here. So let's return to the palette. Alright, so very quickly now I'm going to fill the, uh, I'm going to make the color value web 
which we can just refer to as the value web. I'm gonna to need to add a little bit more medium later. And again, I'm just using the medium uh, to thin out the paint. Ideally, you want to use as the least amount of uh, medium possible in the first layer, but I really want this to be dry by tomorrow. So now we're gonna to start to add in the titanium white. So now we're gonna move on to the poster image. Poster image just means we're gonna be prioritizing light and dark. A little more medium here. So hopefully this will be dry by tomorrow. All right, so this is gonna be my charging brush. I'm gonna push, put this brush off to the side. So I'm gonna have two brushes right now, just a light brush and a dark brush, and we're going to move on to the next stage here. So I have my light brush and my dark brush in hand. So let's go ahead and clarify some shapes. So now we are entering the poster image stage of the underpainting. So that, that is, we're gonna be prioritizing light and dark. And um, you know, when you're putting in the uh, Sorry, I'm kind of focused on the painting. Okay, so when you're putting in your first shapes of light, you know, like that is the first brush stroke of light, it's actually okay to go as light as you can possibly go. So I'm actually gonna put in the, um, like a, a lot more of the titanium white into that shape right there. And so the thing is with the underpainting and with, just with layering oil paintings, in general, it's actually, uh, I think, a little, a little more beneficial to work lighter. So notice how I'm going right for the light accents. So I'm actually working from the light. So yes, it's a, it's a little easier to um, layer lighter because as you continue to add more and more layers, you will be able to, uh, you know, with, um, with semi-transparent applications of paint, you'll be able to glaze and, and glaze and make things darker with much more facility if you're working over top of something that's lighter. So I'm definitely prioritizing the light right now. Which is why I call this the uh, posterized image. Now with the dark brush, I don't want to do too much yet. So what I'm going to do right now is just very lightly kind of soften that, that line right there. Don't want to do too much. So there is, a, um, it, this does have a very different light scenario because there's a light coming down. So this is very different to what we're used to. We're used to the light going from the top. Now, if I were working in the Alla Prima technique, I did do a study from life um, last, last Friday, and um, I used the Alla Prima approach to do the study. I usually don't like to jump right into a painting. I usually like to have at least one study or so. But in the study, I used the Alla Prima technique uh, working wet on wet, and that is a little more difficult uh, for uh, how do I how do I put it for different light scenarios. So this light scenario is again uh, you've, I don't think I've painted a portrait with a light scenario such as this one before.
But anyway, you're starting to get the idea of what I mean by the posterized image. Now with the dark brush, I'm going to start to put in some of these darker accents. I want to make sure not to mess up the angle of the mouth. See, I think I dropped this too low. So I think that should go to about there. And there's the highlight on the nose. And there's going to be all kinds of little half tones in here, but I'm going to start off with the um, just the light on the side over here. So I'm actually going to be using um, I'm going to be using this tone that I ended up placing here by accident by just wiping out the lines so many times. A little bit lighter here. And see how the image is starting to emerge. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to refine these shapes. I'm going to put some little subtle half tones uh, here and there in these shapes, but it's going to be a lot of the same kind of repetition now. All right, voiceover, Yupari is back. So that means that I'm speaking to you now after the fact. So that means that um, at this point, you are now observing footage of me painting as I am 100% focused on the painting. So at this point, I'm just trying to close up some of the forms in order to uh, facilitate the light and shadow delineations. So you're gonna be seeing little uh, short clips of me developing uh, the form, closing up the forms. And uh, now that I'm in voiceover mode, I have a little more uh, information. So the, the portrait that I was working on yesterday, the one that you saw yesterday, remember the first, um, the local color stage, um, the painting from yesterday, basically. I'm going to continue that painting. So rather than having you, uh, you know, watch like, 10 episodes straight in a row of the same painting. I'm going to be altering them, um, you know, just so we have some more context. That being said, uh, now you're starting to see uh, we're advancing onto the forms. So closing up the forms just means that we are uh, putting in more half tones and starting to create the uh, you know the volume of the forms in monochrome but this is only to facilitate the uh, light and shadow delineations okay i'm not really trying to finish anything though i'm applying the entire uh, value range all i want to do is um, you know get a better sense of the forms and for the underpainting stage remember i'm not I'm trying not to use as much medium as possible. So again, since I'm talking to you in voiceover mode, I didn't get to take this large painting to the um, the painting group because the next day uh, it wasn't dry. So we will be continuing to work on this painting from uh, the photo references. And I think we'll be fine working on the painting from the photo references. But in any case, uh, now you're seeing the uh, the painting, or at least the face after a good, I don't know, uh, hour or so of putting in these subtle half tunes, closing up the forms. So, like I said, it's a lot of repetition you can see here. Um, the reason the paint isn't really sticking so well is because I didn't want to use that much medium, especially in the uh, the underpainting stage. So, in the side planes in particular, I didn't really use too much medium. That being said, um, I did want this painting to be dry, <laughs> this layer to be dry the next day, but I didn't really get to that. And so um, I'm just trying to close up these planes. Now you can see here that each value corresponds to a particular plane. So this plane right here is turning further away. So uh, you have just witnessed us move from the larger plane divisions and now we are uh, subdividing into the smaller plane divisions.
All right, so now that we have uh, decided our composition, we've blocked in the simple shapes and started to even close up some of the forms for the underpainting. Now, uh, remember, closing up the forms doesn't mean finishing it. It just means applying the entire value spectrum. Even though um, burnt umber, the reason I like to use burnt umber is because it dries really fast and it doesn't get as dark as ivory black or ultramarine blue, so it allows me to compress the value range. So when I do get into color, I'm able to continue to you know, expand on the value scale. Uh, I don't think I had enough time to make it to the arms, the shoulder, the arms, and the, the hands. So I think that's going to be for another day. All right, let me stop myself right there. So I was going to say that I was going to take this painting to the portrait group where this pose is ongoing from life, but I couldn't make it there with this painting. That was the next day. This painting did not dry by that point in time, so I was not able to take this painting. So um, we are going to have to continue the other portrait that we started before. Uh, so we're going to be bouncing back and forth between many different paintings, and we're going to have some more pet portraits too, so that'll be something to look forward to. Now back to normal Yupari. And that being said, always remember, in a world that can be so negative, be the spark that ignites positivity amongst all of us. I really do hope that you have a wonderful day, and I'll be back again with our next episode tomorrow. And here is a view of the painting with the camera as close to front and center as possible. So you can see the painting with the least amount of distortion. So I think uh, in another episode, I'm going to come back in and underpaint the rest of the arms. I probably won't focus too much here, but definitely we're going to spend a little bit of time underpainting the hands.